Why hello YouTube Welcome back this is Baylor Mage again and I thought since we spent about three hours reading the goddamn patch notes and going through them all with a fine tooth comb that uploading a three hour video of me reading patch notes including ad breaks was probably not the play so we went through it and made a list of all of what are my personal highlights from the patch notes. If you're very interested in any of the things specifically that we talk about, we will also have a link to the full patch notes in the description, just in case somehow you're living under a rock and you didn't know where those were yet, or just for your convenience. But um, TLDR of the TLDR right at the front. I'm excited about 98% of things. And then there's one line in the patch notes, which scares me into oblivion. We will get to that. This is my personal list of things from the patch notes that I thought were my favorite or most impactful parts. The patch notes are huge. This is not at all everything, but we made ourselves a little text document so that hopefully we can only take 10 or 20 minutes instead of like three and a bit hours to go through it in a YouTube video. So, patch notes from the Caloundra League announcement that happened today. First, first one that showed up that I thought was really cool is this added a new dexterity skill gem, Alchemist Mark. So it's a brand new mark. It stole the flash charge generation from Sniper's Mark, which I only learned existed on Sniper's Mark today because it's never what we've used it for. But what it most importantly does is it causes your strongest poison and your strongest ignite to make a burning ground or a caustic ground or both if you're doing both on the ground under the target whenever you make it. Seems very interesting for Ignite builds. It's going to be rather difficult for Poison builds to use it because it will only use your strongest Poison. And typically, Poison builds exist by applying 20, 30, 40, 50 Poisons to a boss and having that stack up to be good damage. And the Caustic Ground will only represent the largest single Poison that you put on the target. So for most Poison builds, that revolve around hitting things very often, very quickly, as much as possible. The caustic arrow part of this, or the caustic ground part of this is gonna be pretty meh. Um, ignites on the other hand are already single large hits as big as you can get. And for that, this will be really good. And if you happen to be doing poisons somehow in a way that has individual very large poisons, it'll be really, really good for that as well. Super interesting new gem, like it, very good. Uh, one of my favorite things in the list is Arch Nemesis is getting rebalanced. We literally just had Arch Nemesis League followed by Arch Nemesis getting put into the base game and everyone losing their minds because it was way too difficult. All rares and magics throughout the entire game have been rebalanced, including the amount of them that you see, what their mods are, when those mods are available, how they stack, how the rewards are. Everything has been changed. So... This is going to be quite interesting. This really looks like how Arch Nemesis should have been. And I think everyone's going to be a lot happier. Um, previous, as a note here is previously content made fights harder by spawning a lot of rares in some cases, six to eight times the normal rate of rare monsters. Now that we have better mods available, blah, 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 TLDR. We spawn less rares everywhere, but they are slightly more impactful. Um, a lot of the Arch Nemesis modifiers have had their rewards rebalanced to be quite a bit more rewarding than before. Um, also, much of the rewards that drop from Arch Nemesis now also scale with the rarity and quantity of your own character, which they didn't do in the past. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, you'll be starting only able to have single mod rares in the beginning in during the campaign and then in maps you'll only be able to find two mod rares um and then sometimes three and sometimes fours but never once um, rarely four and obviously they won't all be stacked together this even includes things like legion and whatnot like normally you pop open a legion and there'll be like seven or eight rares in a row all ready to just gangbang you at one time um, and that sort of thing should not happen anymore the idea of this is that 
rares are far more normalized in quantity and you're not going to get overwhelmed by them anymore it's going to make it much easier to manage much easier to work out what's going on you're not going to get one hit comboed by a bunch of them all at once but their rewards have been scaled accordingly so it will be a hard fight like it is and then will actually be rewarding to do um again look at the announcement if you need more information about it read through the patch notes yourself this is just the highlight moving on they've done a lot of things with beyond a lot of things with beyond beyond has massively changed um to hit just the highlight points beyond is now a static 15 percent chance it doesn't stack so there's no such thing as double beyond or triple beyond anymore all of the beyond demons are gone they're all replaced with scourge monsters scourge monsters are the new beyonds um which is i'm all fine with that and also beyond maps or at least mapping with beyond is also how we will now encounter our scourge bosses those scourge bosses exist and we'll be able to drop their scourge currency so tainted fuses are back which is also very nice <clears throat> there is one very very bad part in my mind of the beyond changes now this does mean we're going to have less beyond monsters in general less rares in general less for my headhunter juicing in general and i am fine with all of those things i'm actually i'm perfectly on board with all of those things but there's one line in this beyond note that i've pulled out specifically that really worries me it is this the end of this line here only one beyond boss can spawn per instance so these are the old scourge bosses that's fine once a boss has spawned beyond portals will no longer spawn in that instance now for your regular alk and go person this is fine this won't cause any problem you will probably have a beyond boss in every map that you have beyond in which is an old scourge boss they're the new beyond ones you will probably find one in every map my concern my only concern is for like the super juices here if by uh, this line right here instead once a substantial number of beyond demons have been spawned in the instance each pack will grant a stacking chance for the next pack to be replaced with a boss now the concern here is that that might not scale with my juice investment so it might be the case that your regular alk and go map has 1200 to 1400 mobs in it and that after you kill let's say 900 odd mobs uh the beyond boss spawns and then that last little you know 20 20 25 percent of your map doesn't have the beyond in it but you got the beyond boss and it was all well and good if that doesn't scale with investment my normal high investment maps will normally have seven to eight thousand mobs in them and if i kill 900 mobs of my seven or eight thousand mob map and then the beyond disappears because the boss spawned one or two screens away from the portal i then only have you know a thousand fifteen hundred more mobs through that whole map instead of the other seven thousand mobs that i would have had were i able to still spawn beyond portals it is a humongous drop to the amount of mobs that could be in my map if it works that way we don't know if it works that way I have no idea whether that's going to be a problem or not. I could be overreacting. I could be reacting to something that is nothing, that's not a problem, but I really don't know. And there is no clarification on it. Uh, what I am going to do is I am going to link my little, my little tweet worrying about it with a link to that exact thing on it. It's gotten a little bit of attention already. Uh, I am going to link that in the description of the video. If anyone else is also worried about it, please like it retweet it comment on it make it show up in more feeds get it attention i would really like an answer this is the one thing that's worrying me it's the only thing that's worrying me i need to know that this scales with the amount of juice and that i'm not going to lose my beyond two screens into a map everything else about this patch today has been amazing right okay next harvest the harvest rework super interesting rather than being presented with a selection of crafting options that you must use immediately 
you now receive itemized tradable life force of the appropriate color. This life force can be used later in your own items at the hoarder crafting bench in your hideout. Its crafting options are now priced in terms of items of this itemized life force currency. Tier four bosses are now encountered much more frequently and can drop a key to drop a shabby. She yields a specific life force that can be used for a specific set of crafts. So what this means is when you run into a harvest, you will select the harvest plot you want and kill them. There will be no crafts for you there at all. There will be just a stack of life force currency for you to pick up. And then all the crafts will be available on your hoarder crafting bench in your hideout. All of the harvest crafts will be there, but they will all cost an appropriate amount of this currency. So you'll be able to hoard this currency forever and then use it on a crafting project when you feel like it. And if you don't feel like it, you can just sell that itemized stuff to someone who does want to craft for a bunch of money. And if you feel like doing a bunch more crafting, you can just buy that life force essence and then do your harvest crafting. There are a lot more notes involved in this. Some of the harvest craft of changes. Some of the augments are now a null augments, things like that. There are, there are some other changes that have happened there, but I'm not going to go through all of them. This is just the TLDR. This is the part that stands out the most that I think is the most important. It makes a much smoother mapping experience. For me, the reason I quite often blocked harvest, even though it's a super rewarding mechanic, is because it really, really, really interrupted my mapping flow, right? In the past, you would have to go in, you kill all the harvest plots and then you'd have to look at all the crafts, figure out if you wanted to keep any, figure out if you have to use any, maybe clear some space in your bench, try and figure out which ones were worth saving and which ones you were like, oh man, I would use that later, but it's just not rare enough to keep for now. So I'm just going to leave it there. And then there's the, all these decision-making things that I don't want to do at that time. I just want to kill mobs. Now it's just run in, kill mobs, pick up your item, leave, worry about crafting when it's time for you to worry about crafting when you feel like it. Fantastic. <clears throat> excuse me i absolutely love that absolutely fantastic right next change exalted and divine orbs this is massive this is massive oh man divine orbs and exalt orbs actually have the same drop rate this is true they have for quite a while but exalted orbs are worth so much more in trade value because there is no easy vendor recipe for them and they're consumed when you craft meta molds on one item out of these two currencies, we would actually prefer that divine orbs be rarer so that unique items with good rolls matter more. And so that players can exalt craft their items more frequently. We're making two changes that will impact this. Firstly, we are changing the cost of the crafting meta mods so that they cost divine orbs rather than exalt orbs. Secondly, we are changing the six link vendor recipe to grant 20 orbs of fusing rather than a divine orb. This is where a very, very large majority of the divine orbs that we ever collected came from. Vendoring corrupted six links and tabulas and all that sort of stuff. Um, quite often there are people who would farm hundreds and hundreds of divines a day by doing like corrupted farming and picking up, you know, a ton of six links. And getting all those divine orbs also there's a plethora of exalted orb divination cards there is as far as i can tell one divine orb divination card and it isn't even in a map that you can farm it's in like i actually forget what map but it's in one of the dominus maps and it comes only from the boss rather rarely not from like a, a map that you can even quant farm so we should all expect the divines to be the new exalted orb. Divines are going to be more expensive than exalts. Uh, it's up to anyone's guess how much more expensive. It could be something as extreme as divines being 150 chaos and exalts being 30 chaos, or it could be something more like exalts are 70 chaos and divines are 100. It could be anywhere within that range. I have no idea. Anyone who claims they have a good idea is making it up. We're all just, nothing like this has ever happened. I have absolutely no idea how the market is going to respond. This is going to be super interesting, but also good luck divining any of your own things because using a single divine is now very expensive comparatively. You're definitely not divining your own Ventus Gambles 
or um, timeless jewels or anything like that. So there is that. There are 100 reworked uniques orange shit balls i called them there are 100 reworked uniques unfortunately i'm not going to go through all of them i will give you the tldr um i think like 97 or so of those 100 uniques as i read through all of them individually and painstakingly compared them to their previous ones i'm pretty happy with almost every single one of them has a really good place in the game um, they're either really good for leveling or really good for early maps. There aren't that many super min max like chase item versions, but I'll be a lot more happy to find these while leveling. And I'll be a lot more happy to have these even for alts leveling later on. Um, and even for cheaper earlier stage gearing things. <coughs> Excuse me. So when we're looking at builds that are in the range of one exalt to 20 exalts um so quite a few of these uniques will still be useful inside that range they won't be big chase items and they won't beat out god tier rares but overall really really good changes there's a full list in the patch notes if you're really interested go and look through all of those um, maybe look for specific items that you're interested in that would be great um they did i will mention that they did overall nerf the unique drop rate of all uniques in the game so we are supposed to see less uniques by an indeterminate amount that they didn't give us a number of however a ton of these uniques are now worth more and because divines are so expensive because they're so expensive now well rolled uniques will be significantly more expensive so when we're talking about well rolled what we mean is there's a lot of like average one to two C uniques right now that if you have a really well rolled version of might be 30 chaos instead of one C. Uh, next league, I would expect something more like a really, really well rolled version might be 120 chaos instead of one or two C. So there's going to be a lot more picking up of uniques. It's going to be a brand new landscape. I'm very interested to see how all that works sad for me there were two items specifically that i was really hoping would be in that list that were not in that list i was really hoping the wind dripper would get reworked because its damage is just absolutely abysmal it is a it's just a too low amount of damage to be relevant right now even if i wanted to use it even if i wanted to use an early maps it just doesn't do enough damage it needed a rework it's not there very sad and there was also no namahu axe I was really excited that, that the Namahu might get reworked. It wasn't in there. So neither of those are in there. I'm a little bit sad about that, but the rest of them, very good. All right. Next thing. Next thing that's important. Uh, spell suppression. There are a bunch of spell suppression changes. The TLDR of spell suppression changes is that every single spell suppression node on the tree all got slightly better somewhere between 10 and 30 percent better than what it was <coughs> excuse me i still have a cough from being sick so most nodes 10 to 30 percent better than what they were it'll be a lot easier to suppress cap if you are on the right hand side of the tree but all suppression on items all of the rare rolls that you could have got are all significantly worse we're talking things that used to be 34 percent and now 24 percent and you can extrapolate from there so the idea of suppress capping just purely off your gear got potentially quite a lot harder and potentially not even possible. I'm not 100% sure. I didn't do the math, but it's definitely a lot harder to suppress cap just from gear to the point where you might not bother suppressing if you're nowhere near the area of the tree. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. I haven't done any path of building on anything yet. We don't have a path of building update and the patch notes just came out. So I don't know how that's going to shake out. But so far, very interesting. Um, next up, we have some Necromancer and Minion changes. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the specific Necromancer and Minion changes other than the plus two Minion node is gone from Necromancer as well as um, the Minion Corpse. No, sorry, the Corpse Life is also gone from Necromancer. So it lost a lot of its raw power, but none of its 
identity like the things that it was giving were just raw power for power's sake that locked us into playing that class however i also believe that a lot of base minion stats in a lot of minion cases have all been balanced around the fact that they're going to have the necromancer power and so while they have now added a bunch of minion gear a bunch of minion shields a minion ring some lower level minion wands that can roll minion modifiers and so there's going to be a whole lot of new minion modifiers that'll help us get that power back my personal belief is that most minions not all there will be some exceptions there will be some minion builds that work but most minions right now even with these changes are in a base power level state that's actually too weak to really exist as a good build um so while the minion changes that have happened really really good super happy about it great direction love to see the emphasis on gear <coughs> as well as less emphasis on actually being forced to play a necromancer i can play other ascendancies that's all great i think this league minions overall is still going to be relatively disappointing and i'll expect to see some base minion buffs happening probably next league when they realize mm, minions still aren't quite good enough because we had to over nerf them because of the power of the old necromancer and other things interesting uh fun fact here is over the last six sets of changes um specters have lost 12 levels over the last six patches specters have lost 12 levels on a level 20 gem that that is humongous humongous so specters are my personal favorite spe uh, minion which is probably why i'm this focused on it there will be other minions that work but specters have always been my personal favorite and even with all the changes that we're getting here specters are just not in a good place you won't be able to save them specters are not the way do not play them um but yeah hopefully hopefully next league we'll be looking at being able to play specters again right next up trickster i don't know how many people were expecting the trickster rework to actually look good but it does the trickster re -look, rework looks really exciting i'm really excited about the chance to put plus two maximum frenzy charges in some forbidden jewels on a different character real excited for that but uh overall even just the trickster itself actually looks really good the action speed nodes there's there's an action speed node that gives you essentially an eight percent tailwind it's you get 108 percent action speed and then and then enemies near you get reduced action speed um and then but it also comes with you cannot be slow below that action speed which gives you the the nice sort of old juggernaut or calms roots effect where you can't be frozen or chilled or temp chains doesn't slow you down like that sort of thing so um, this is not a list of the full ascendancy reworks again you can look them up if you're interested but it it actually looked really good legitimately trickster actually looks like a class we could play again um it may i may make a trickster as my second character of the league because it looks quite good next thing on my list crystallized omniscience we already knew that this was happening but just in case anyone missed it tldr crystallized omniscience got nerfed by a relatively significant amount it will still be good the problem is it will still it will need far more investment than it did before to be good and it won't be as powerful as it was i'm still pretty confident and this is just a guess but i am still pretty confident that a perfectly min maxed like or 500x bow character or something like that would still end up using crystallized omniscience or omniscience however the hell it is you're supposed to say that but i suspect that even in the 1 to 200x range it probably might not be the best way to do things anymore um so for most people probably goodbye to crystallized omniscience um ashes stayed the same so we can still use that amulet that being said divining it to actually be good is going to be real expensive with the new cost of divines so we'll see how that goes right next up in my list brittle brittle got a very substantial nerf brittle ailment cap used to give you 15 percent base crit 
it now only gives you six and it's base value used to give you five so if you just had brittle ground and no investment you would get five percent crit that that crit value is now two now i bring this up because i think that there's going to be an overreaction on this nerf um i actually think this nerf is appropriate i think if we had never had 15 percent base crit to begin with and we were just being introduced to brittle now and we were being told it would give you six percent base crit we would all be losing our minds about how powerful it is um so i actually think this is fine this is still very very strong the oh woe is me crowd might actually end up having to take one or two crit wheels on their crit capped build as well as maybe wearing a diamond flask which we didn't have to do before just to get that crit cap up so oh no there's a little bit of investment in crit that'll be needed now if you want a crit cap you can no longer just use brittle to crit cap for free but six percent base crit is still quite a lot scorch and sap were untouched and they're both still fantastic alt ailments are still on the table you will have to make an adjustment to your build i still think it's fine and this next up is reservation efficacy which i don't love but i understand why it's happening but i still don't love it tldr they think reservation efficacy is a little bit too easy to get but not a lot too easy to get so they haven't made very many changes basically these three are the only changes that really really impact anything the reservation mastery the granted 15 percent rmr to or, or mana reservation efficacy to skills has been removed it's just gone doesn't exist anymore the life reservation efficacy of skill now has a 20% value instead of a 13% value and the increased effect of auras on you now has a 10% value instead of 15 from the mastery so not huge excuse me not huge changes there but big enough to affect your builds i expect enlightened to increase in price because of this more people are going to need to run an enlightened just to be able to fit in the basic auras that they wanted so that'll happen we do have our kirak league mods available for me this is a pretty disappointing list but that is really just based on personal preference there is still essence here there is still ambush here heist even at six chaos i'm not sure about but it does give two smugglers cash so that might be worth it legion at six chaos is probably going to be worth it blight is almost certainly not because you'll be able to use a scarab and those will be cheaper and i heavily expect expedition to just be cheaper to run through a scarab mostly be i'm a little bit sad that it doesn't have expedition encounter like with something extra like with some extra pack size or some extra remnants or like something to make it worth 12 chaos i know expedition is very very profitable but just having area contains expedition makes this the equivalent to a rusted scarab so if you're thinking about running expedition just do make sure that you check the price of rusted scarabs which is probably going to end up being four to six chaos instead of 12 and then just run those instead um otherwise for me personally this is just a fortune favors the brave for three chaos for my 10 percent pack size and quantity and i'm just probably going to be on that forever right last two humongous changes user interface changes the map device now remembers which map crafting option you used last and it is automatically selected if it's available and you have the relevant currency so if you're happy if you happen to be farming something anything especially if it's something that you have to scroll down for and you just like want to do your legions at every single map in your legion farming you'll just click legion once and every map you launch will just have legion and cost you six chaos and it'll just keep going and keep going until you change the selection huge props on that about time i don't want to i don't want to see negative but this could have happened years ago uh but i'm i'm very grateful that it's coming now so here we are uh and lastly trade change website accessing the path of exile trade website now requires you to be logged in um i only put this here 
because I think this is actually going to have a relatively meaningful impact on how easy it is to locate and ban bots. And I think that's going to have a bigger impact than we imagine. As a player, individually on an individual level, I don't think this has a huge impact because before we already needed to be logged in because if we put more than like one or two lines of, of like ifs or ands in our search parameters and we weren't logged in, it would just time out. So you already had to be logged in to do any version of a complex search. Now you just have to be logged in to search all. I imagine we're all logged in on the website. If you're not logging in on the website, not really a big deal. So the only reason this is here is because I'm pretty sure it's going to have a pretty meaningful impact on bots and how those work. So other than that, not on this spreadsheet is how I feel about the Calandra League and the TLDR of how I feel about the Calandra League is just that it looks real damn exciting. It looks real damn exciting. I want to tell everyone if it wasn't for this one sentence here in the beyond, this this beyond thing worrying me, if I take that out, my excitement level is at a 10 right now. Everything else on this list, fucking 10. I'm so excited for this league. This is not a league you want to be skipping. Everything about it looks fantastic. Please do click on my tweet link and, you know, share it and retweet it and like it and maybe leave a comment and you know give it as much traction as possible i really need some clarification on how this is going to work it's the only thing i'm sad about i know i'm harping on about it a little bit but i am i'm really really worried about that one thing everything else mwah, 10 fantastic job also exile con i have mm, exile con Ooh. Ooh, that's a, that's a whole different video. We were not going to go into that now, but mwah, highlight of the whole thing. ExileCon announcement. Huge. All right. That is all. I am going to get started on just the inordinate amount of work there is to do before the league starts. So that is all I have for you. That is my TLDR. I will see everybody next time. Goodbye.